Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So I was contacted by Arteza and asked if I wanted to work with them. So I very excitedly said yes. And then they said, tell us what you'd like out of the shop. Um, for a girl who loves paints and colours and <laughs> it was like, oh, everything. But I didn't want to be greedy <laughs> at the same time. So I asked to try a, a set of their gouache. And they actually ended up sending me their biggest set. Look at this, it's huge. It's got masses and masses of paint colours in it. So, I've never tried gouache before. Um, from what I understand, it's like a watercolour, um, but it's more opaque. Um, so, I thought I'd give that a try. Now, because I've never tried gouache before, I have also nipped out and bought some Daler Rowney stuff as well, so I can do a proper comparison, because otherwise I thought it probably wasn't overly fair. So what I might do is I might just swatch out the three primary colours and find similar of these just to do a comparison and then we can do a painting. Um, I also asked for the watercolour paper that was theirs as well because um, I'm always interested in finding decent watercolour paper. So we will have a little play and see how we get on. Okay I seem to have lost my paint palette so I've got a little bit of MDF there. <laughs> Okay, so we'll dry putting out. So this is the Dela Rowney. So let's pop. Oh, that's pierced. If I have to do that with all of them, I will stop the camera. But there you go. You just uh, need to pierce it slightly. Oh, it's all happening. The phone's going downstairs. Um, I can hear my daughter playing in the hallway, which is typical. So if you hear a whole load of nonsense, that's why. Right, so. The De La Rowney, you have to pierce to open. Um, the Arteza is all ready and set to go. So I don't know what that makes. Now, they don't have the exact colour matches. So I'm just going to be looking at how easy they are to use, the transparency, all of that sort of stuff. So I'll put out the rest okay. of the paints. I'll say, I'm hoping it's not going to be too noisy. <laughs> so first impressions out of the tube. These are the De La Rowney, the, the, yeah, De La Rowney ones. And they seem a little bit more watery. Um, the Arteza ones look a bit thicker, a bit more substantial. So we can just swatch these out. So I'll do the Dela Rowney on this side. So I'm just adding a bit of water. So let's just swatch this out. Okay. And we can do the same. So yeah, I can already see a difference. That is a lot thicker. Um, and now, as I said, a gouache is meant to have the properties of a watercolour, um, but a lot more opaque. So, yeah, that one just feels like I'm using an ordinary watercolour. It doesn't seem that opaque. So, so far, the Arteza is ticking the boxes for me there. So I'll just swatch out the rest of those colours. Oops, I have added quite a bit of water to that. So I'll do the same with the with the um, Arteza as well. Okay, so I'll make sure that I'm doing this fair. So let's get a fair amount of water on my brush. So, yeah, I've got that nice and watery. And even though with the water, it's still, I still find this is a lot thicker and a lot more opaque. So I think I'll enjoy using these. I, I do love my watercolours, but sometimes, you know, they can be very soft. It depends on what look that you are going for. So I don't have a huge amount of water there. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, they're definitely finding these a lot thicker. So I am liking them. Um, they seem very highly pigmented. Um, they are moving like a watercolour and they definitely seem a lot thicker as I've said. So let's just try some basic colour mixing. So I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow. This is the De La Rowney, a little bit of the green. Yeah, let's get some more yellow in there. Make it a nice lime green. Yeah, so... Again, that looks quite washed out. To have got a decent colour there, I'm looking quite washed out. Right, let's see how we got on with these two. Yep. Okay, so similar, similar 
instances. So let's see, I like a nice lime green. Let's get plenty of yellow in there. Oops. Yeah, I am liking, I am liking. They are almost, they do have the high pigment of uh, like using an acrylic. Um, but the fact that you'll be able to use it with water for different effects will be quite good. Now, let me see, we'll mix a, we'll, we'll mix a orange as well, as soon as we've done that. Okay, now the next thing I want to try, because in watercolour, a technique that I use a lot is I lift. So, we will just dry that off and then see how well we can lift colour out of the page. Okay, so that's them dried off. I am really impressed with the pack. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun. I mean, this is just an initial impression. Um, I like the way the colours have mixed better. I've managed to get the colours I wanted. Um, I'm not so keen on how those have turned out. They look quite washed out. Um, so, yeah. So what I'm going to try now is just flicking some water on. Now, I'm not sure if this is a property of gouache at all. As I said, this is a new product for me. So, like... If you're an expert in gouache and you're wanting to try out a different brand, you're probably best watching somebody else's review. <laughs> but if you're a newbie and want to see it as a first impression, then kind of stay tuned. So that's me just sprinkled some water on it. Right, so I'm going to lift these ones first. So these ones did look quite watery. Um, hmm. They've not actually lifted particularly well. Okay, that has lifted slightly, but not as much as normal watercolour. But as I said, I don't know really what the nature of the beast is because I've not really used it. So let's, I'll try a more definite. Let's really go for it. See how easily we can do this. Right, so this time I've really moved it. You know, like if I was creating a sun or something in a, a sunset, this is the sort of technique that I would use. So just splashing the water hasn't done a huge amount. Let's see how we... But it didn't on the daily round either, so... Let's have a little look. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're probably hearing all sorts of noises coming from the hallway. Sounds like my daughter and husband are playing ball. Right, okay. So yeah, that's lifted slightly. Yeah, you can see it more on the blue. So we have we have managed to lift it, um, but it takes a bit more work than normal watercolour. But actually, even when you compare those two, even though this is a lot more watery, the lift off from here has been far more definite. So that is quite good, yeah. So first impressions, I am really liking them. I think I am going to really enjoy getting to know this product really well. I'm sorry for the cheering downstairs. Um, I will maybe put this on pause for a little while and once they've quietened down, <laughs> I'll come back and paint a picture. Okay, so I've cut my Arteza paper. There was a rough side and a smooth side. So what I've actually done is this is the rough side here and this is the smooth side there. And then I was just going to paint a little scene. This may become my new favourite colour. I've just put it out. Peach red. It's like the most... Um, look. Look at that. <laughs> so I'm just going to create a little... Um, let's create a little quick watercolour scene. Look at that pink, that is awesome. I can see some fun mixed media projects with that. So at the minute I am keeping this quite watery because I am wanting to create a, um, like a little, uh, a, a washed background. We'll create a little sunset. I know it doesn't look like it with that bright pink. So this is a purpley colour. What have we got here? We have got, and I have watered this down quite a bit. Um, what's this one? Wineberry. I like the sound of that. Let's try a bit thicker. Okay. So when you do a wash like this, you come start at the top and come down into that colour and then back up and then you get a much more natural gradient. So we're starting at the top, we're coming down into the pink and then we're going back up. Now I'm going to add some yellow to the mix. So I've still got my yellow from last time. It's slightly mixed up with the red, but that's okay. So again, I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to work up into my colour. It's not 
blending too well so I'm needing some more water so we go up into the colour and then back down and that is going to give us that nice um, gradient. So I'm starting on its own, moving up into the next colour and back down. And then finally I have got a little bit of like a olive green. So let's we'll go up and back down like so. Okay. Now I was loving that pink so I'm going to add some more in. So again I'm just going to go in the middle and then I'm going to take it up into that one and down into that. I might actually need to, yeah, I don't know, I just really like that pink. <laughs> I love the vibrancy of that. I can, I wonder if they sell it in single tubes. <laughs> I'll be like, can you replace my pink? <laughs> okay, so we'll do that and then we'll blend because now the yellow looks a bit out of place. So we will blend that yellow up and down. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So that's the first stage. I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so I'm going to do what I was attempting earlier, which was to create that sort of faux sunshine. So I've realised from what we learned earlier, this is why swatching, I mean, to be honest, I've not swatched out all the colours. It's because I've be spent the last probably two weeks literally colouring with alcohol markers every day which is great and it's lovely that that's my job now but I've not played properly in the loft and I just don't know I'm not in the mood for properly swatching but it is why swatching and just beginning to have a play with your new materials is worthwhile because you will understand how they work so it's like I know from the samples that I did earlier that this needs a lot more working than working with um, normal watercolours. So you see I've just created a little bit of movement in that and then we will just lift that up with some tissue and then we've got a little bit of lightened. So it's not quite as dramatic as when you use normal watercolour but it's a nice soft effect. We're still getting the effect that we that we like so that's good. Now I am just going to take a piece of paper and rip it. Okay. Oops. Let me actually, yeah. So what we're going to do now is just create a little bit of a foreground. It's a really easy way of doing this. So I'm just going to get a bit of the green that I had before and I'm literally just going to brush it. So I'm starting on the paper and I'm moving off. So even if we feel that, oh, I'm not an artist, I'm not artistic, we can create really interesting things really easy. So again, I'm taking a bit of the green and I'm kind of going from the paper and off onto my project. And now we've created a little bit of scenery. <laughs> so it's amazing how easy it is to kind of put something together. Oops. I'm going to create because that's got a bit wet so let's do the same on this side so again I'm starting on the paper now this time I've gone a bit heavier I've not watered it down so I'm starting on the paper and moving off onto my project I think that's just a little bit too dry but it depends on the look that you're going for but we will see a difference between the two the two sides from me doing that so there we go we've now got a little bit of grass and we will do the same again here and we've just created a tiny bit of interest. Now that looks a bit strange there, but that's fine. We can just dab it and sort it out. Okay. So now we've sort of done that. Now I want to have some more individual grasses. So let's take a smaller brush now. Okay, and I am going to take the same green and let's just, we can do some flicks. And I think what will be nice with this is because it is gouache, um, we have that, it almost feels like an acrylic at this stage. So we've been able to water it down to look like a, to get the nice sort of watercolour effects. I'm not trying anything difficult here, I'm just literally flicking. It's just lines, it's a suggestion, this is not... I don't do fine art. I am very impressed with all these people that do do it. I, I follow a lot of them and they're incredible. But, you know, um, that's not me, I'm afraid. So I'm just kind of almost framing this now. 
um, and I've gone for the same colour that I've created that um, the grass with and that'll sort of tie it all in, in together there. So I'll do the same here and put it on like so. So I'll maybe just pop you on fast forward while I do the other side. Okay, one thing I want to say that I forgot, that while I was doing those strokes, I had my hand right at the end of the brush, so I didn't have a huge amount of control over it. I think as soon as you start trying to do this, that's when it looks, um, it doesn't look right. Have I got a spare bit of paper here? So if we start kind of going like this, that's where we may, maybe get something that doesn't look so natural. But if we're holding the brush at the back, like that right at the end and I'm just literally just dusting it over and, and wiggling okay now I want to kind of create a little bit more detail so now I am going further down my brush and I'm just going to add some little um I'm just literally dabbing the brush down so the the shape of the brush is creating a few little leaves for me okay so I am going to do that with the green and then also with the lilac that we had I'm going to do something similar but instead of pulling the brush down to get a teardrop shape I'm just literally going to put it on its point and get some little dots like so. Okay so again I'll pop you on fast forward while I'm doing that. These aren't, as I said, major works of art. I, I'm, I am no fine artist. I just play, but hopefully it maybe looks achievable. Quick wash. Um, you can. Um, that's fairly easy with the paper. You can create the background in a circle. I've. These are literally squiggly lines. If you can draw a squiggly line, then you can do this. But if you are a bit nervous, um, if you're a stamper, get out some silhouette stamps and just stamp it against a washed background. I have to say, first impressions of these paints, I am liking it. I am looking forward to having um, a much better play with them and doing a, um, you know, gradually learning more and more and sharing it with you as I learn it. I have grabbed the titanium white in the set and I am just doing some white splashes because, you know, I can't live without my white splashes. <laughs> to me, things don't look complete until they're covered in white splashes. So let's just do that there. I might go over my bird again because I don't think it looks quite right being <laughs> spotted like that. So we'll just go over him. And as I said, these little birds, it's literally a circle and a triangle. If you can do a circle and a triangle, you can do a little silhouette bird. Okay, so we'll just darken him back up. Sorry for the screaming that's going on downstairs. Right, so let's try the reveal. Do this slowly. Now this isn't proper watercolour tape, it's actually masking tape from from my husband's shed. So I'm hoping it's not too bad yet. If you heat it slightly, I learned that tip off Martella. Yeah, that does make a huge difference. The other thing as well is if you do um, and not that I have one on me, but if you do rip it slightly, apparently if you rub it with the back of a spoon, um, that all kind of, it pushes the fibres back into the paper. And so, so that I've not let that dry overly and I've also put my tape down very squint. So these are probably <laughs> get ripped and torn or something and stuck into a, stuck into a um, art journal. But I'll just do the rest of that off camera.
Okay, so that's my two little paintings done. Overall, as expected, the paper, the paint took better on the slightly textured side. Um, it wasn't quite as vibrant on the smooth side, which is what you'd expect. But if you're a stamper and you like to do things mixed media and you like a nice even paper for stamping on because you get a crisper image, it, there's it's not that much in it. Um, so... I think it could be used both ways, even though it's been designed to be used on the rough side. Um, I love the paints. I will be using them lots and lots and getting to grips with them um, much more. Um, I will put the details for them below. I have signed up for the affiliate program. Um, I've only signed up for that because I think the paints are good. If I did it, I wouldn't have because, you know, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not just going to tell you that something's good because I've had offers of freebies for it. Um, that's that's not who I am. Um, it doesn't cost you anything if you use the affiliate link, um, but I might get a few extra pennies to spend. That's about it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I hope you like. Um, I hope you'll give it a try, even if like watercolour and painting isn't your thing. I hope you'll just give it a try and see how you get on. And um, if you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing. And I will be back again very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.